in uh, ACC center uh, because they help us uh, a lot and uh, uh, we uh, uh, cannot uh, 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 we cannot uh, 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 forget uh, the, la the last meeting uh, in uh, 2019 in uh, 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 our uh, special Azhar uh, hospital uh, and the uh, all uh, patient uh, uh, was success. Uh, and this is uh, 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 very important to us to, uh, uh, to speak with the expert person uh, in the H center in EOS. And I invite Dr. Muaz uh, to uh, give his talk uh, before we starting the, this uh, uh, very important uh, meeting, and I forgot uh, to uh, uh, give a very um, a very small announce about uh, our unit. I just coming from the very very good unit uh, uh, we have now in Mustafa Said Jalal. We have uh, 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 Olympus system with uh, front view uh, AOS and uh, lateral view AOS with ERSP. And uh, many uh, uh, OG, uh, uh, upper endoscopy and the lower endoscopy, uh, we we have now a very good unit, and uh, we invite uh, uh, Professor Dr. Hara and the Okuno and the all experts uh, ex expert in uh, H Center to come in Egypt sooner, uh, uh, inshallah. Uh, okay. Dr. Muaz uh, gave the talk now, and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jamal, for this talk. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وخاتم النبيين ورحمة الله العالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Uh, dear professors, colleagues, dear all participants, dear shared persons, on behalf of uh, gastroenterology department Al Azhar University, I would like to express my deep thankfulness and gratitude to the staff members in H E Cancer Center for their accepting our invitation to uh, start. Uh, online collaboration between IHE Cancer Center and the uh, uh, Department of Hepatology, Gastroenterology and Infectious Disease uh, Al-Azhar University in Cairo. Uh, 
Aichi Cancer Center is uh, one of the largest and the oldest uh, centers in Japan. It's located in uh, Nagoya City, which is the capital of Aichi Prefecture. Uh, it is the city number four in Japan. Uh, Aichi Cancer Center Hospital, along with Aichi Cancer Center Research Institute, uh, are one of the high volume centers uh, fighting cancers in Japan. And uh, especially the Department of Gastroenterology, we have, I get honored to work with them a long time. Uh, and also, I would like to extend my thankfulness and the gratitude to chairpersons and all participants and the audience for joining us today. And we hopefully want to uh, clarify uh, some important topics regarding endoscopic ultrasound. Uh, so now we have just one minute before my talk and I invite Dr. Hara just in one minute to, uh, to make a speech, please. Just welcome. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Kazo Hara from IG Cancer Center. It's my great honor to give a lecture today. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm I'm so glad because uh, this wonderful meeting is maybe will be successful. I hope so. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and. Uh, Continuously, Al Hazar University and the IG Cancer Center, very close relation, I hope. Yeah. And uh, if possible, many young endoscopists from Egypt will visit our center to run interventional use. I want to speak to a young person. If you want to know the interventional US, please let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hara. So, so now, we will, yes, Dr. Amjad, please. I want to start uh, um, this meeting. Uh, I have the honor to uh, present one of the ambassador of uh, the gastroenterology and hepatology department in Al-Azhar University. Uh, Professor Dr. Muaz al -Sha'ar. Um, he um, will uh, talk about uh, the basics of the EUS examination, but before that I would like to uh, welcome all the participants and all chairpersons with me in this session. This is session one, uh, Professor Dr. Can you see now? Yes, we can. We can yes. see. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ambed, for introducing me. Uh, Today, I'm going to uh, illustrate the uh, basics of AOS screening. I'll focus on the pancreatic examination because it is most important. Basically, understanding the AOS screening is very fundamental and very crucial for those who want to run endoscopic ultrasound. It is the first step to run this issue. After that, if you realize and understand the anatomy and the techniques of screening, you will the interventions and the next step would be easier. So, first of all, I would like to present and introduce our team member, pancreatic biliary team at IH Cancer Center. This is our post, Dr. Hara, and uh, the staff member, Dr. Okono, Dr. Haba, and Dr. Kohara, and the resident doctor, Dr. Yamada, and Dr. Koraishi, and Dr. Yanaidani, and Dr. Shikawa, and uh, Dr. Fumihara. I am glad to work with them for a long time. So, I would like to cover these points in my presentation. Background about the endoscopic ultrasound, preparation of the patient, 
and the scanning from the stomach, scanning from duodenal bulb, scanning from descending duodenum. And finally, important notes and take home message. Endoscopic ultrasound applies the technology of endoscopy and the endoluminal ultrasound to visualize the gastrointestinal wall and the adjacent structures. AOS has emerged as an important modality for diagnosis and staging of gut wall lesions and surrounding structures of the mediastinum, abdomen, and pelvis. So for preparation of the endoscopic ultrasound procedure regarding the patient preparation, it is quite similar to the other conventional endoscopy. We should clarify the risks of the procedures and get the informed consent from the patient and he should be fasting for at least eight hours. We should stop anticoagulants and the other blood thinners five days prior to procedure. Patient positioning should be left lateral position and usually conscious sedation or light sedation is enough for such procedures. Regarding the scope preparation, it is better to use balloon over the scope tip. It's very important. I strongly recommend that. Using balloon make the procedure safe and also it leads to clear visualization of some cystic structures. And in some cases during examination from the sending duodenum, it helped to keep scope in place during examination. So I recommend to use over scope alone. It much decreased the risk of complication related to endoscopic ultrasound. We usually use lidocaine as a local anesthetic and or KY gel. Make sure that the scope knobs are free before scope insertion. So now let's run scanning from stomach. Basically, we can examine the pancreatic neck and pancreatic body and pancreatic tail from stomach. In some smart patients, we also can examine pancreatic head, but it is not common, especially in Egypt. So, First of all, we insert the scope over inflated balloon to the gastric antrum and suction of air and gastric juice and withdraw the scope slowly till we can examine the left lobe of the liver. And we, if we, when we examine left lobe of the liver, we start the gastric station. You can, you can, can you see the video? We see the video clearly. Okay. Okay. Oh. Unfortunately, video stopped to work. Yes. Okay. So, left lobe of the river we check from here, we can see left hepatic veins and the right side is B2 and left side is B3. And from now we apply clockwise rotation, clockwise rotation, we can see the umbilical portion. Umbilical portion means the uh, confluence of the portal drainage of the left lobe, portal branch of segment two and portal branch of segment three. More clockwise rotation, we can see the left, left portal vein, this one, and more clockwise rotation, more clockwise rotation, we can see the extra hepatic portal vein and below right branch. Also keep clockwise rotation, we can visualize the IVC and above IVC we can see segment one. Also clockwise rotation, clockwise rotation, we can visualize abdominal aorta. From now we just push the scope a little bit to visualize the celiac takeoff and the SMA. Yeah, 
as you can see here, the celiac artery and the supremocentric artery. When visualization of celiac artery just push the scope a little bit with down angulation, we can see the pancreas here, this MVD at six o'clock. From now, we start to examine the pancreas. This MVD, we should follow to the head side first and from head to body and tail. As you can see, this portal confluence, portal vein and splenic vein and spiromzentric vein. From now, we can push the scope a little bit while up angulated to examine the pancreatic head. Here. Now, scope, we, are, we can see the pancreatic head. Below is CBD and the MBD. Yeah. MBD and CBD, a little bit push the scope and uh, we can examine the papilla at left side. As you see here, we can differentiate black pancreas from white pancreas because this patient is a little bit slim. So we can even examine head and papilla clearly from stomach station in this patient. So now we examine the pancreatic neck here. just related to the portal confluence. This is pancreatic neck. We can use clockwise rotation and the counterclockwise rotation, not to miss any lesion because it's one of the missing point of the pancreas. After that, we follow the pancreatic parenchyma, as you can see now from body to tail side like this by a little bit withdraw the scope and adjust, just withdraw or push and adjust the Follow, just follow pancreatic parenchyma and pancreatic duct in the center. And usually clockwise rotation. This is the kidney level. You can see left kidney here, just below the pancreatic parenchyma. And this is pancreatic parenchyma, clockwise rotation. Clockwise rotation, we can see pancreatic tail here. We should clear this point, which is one of the missing points. More clockwise rotation, we can see spleen. Yeah, little bit push the scope with up angulation to see this splenic hyla. And uh, from now, counterclockwise rotation to see the adrenal gland and left kidney. And here is now gastric station is concluded. So let's remember the landmarks and tips to examine from gastric station. We gently insert the scope over inflated balloon, we uh, fill the gastric antrum and the suction air and the gastric juice. So we till we can visualize the liver and we start from the left loop of the liver. Remember to visualize all these landmarks, hepatic vein, portal vein, uh, IVC, inferovena cava, abdominal aorta, portal confluence, MBD, bile duct, pancreatic parenchyma, left kidney, spleen, left adrenal gland. So uh, scanning from the duodenal bulb, we usually uh, examine the pancreatic head and the whole course of CBD from hyla site to papillary site and the gallbladder from the duodenal bulb. Also, we can in most cases, examine the papilla and the nearby lesions. So first we should inflate the balloon and visualize and confirm the bioloric ring and gently insert the scoop. As you can see, this is the portal confluence. Here, this is pancreatic head and uh, this is the MBD and CBD. This is pancreatic duct, and this is the common bile duct. From now, clockwise rotation, we apply clockwise rotation with a little bit of angulation to follow the uh, bile duct and the pancreatic duct till the babilla in the right side. Just clockwise rotation and up angulation. This is the babilla. 
And the, to trace CBD, we apply counterclockwise rotation with down angulation to trace the CBD from papillary to hilar site. This is the CBD. CBD. And now we can see the cystic duct. Cystic duct here, here. And now you can see the gallbladder neck start and gallbladder body here. From now, there is three important movement. Try to remember at the same time and different directions. From now, we apply up angulation, up and down angulation with counterclockwise rotation and withdraw the scope to scan the gallbladder from neck to body and fundus like this. Again, up angulation and counterclockwise with withdraw the scope till we can scan the gallbladder completely like this. And by scanning gallbladder, we finish the transpalp examination. Tips, as you can see, the just insert the scope gently over inflated balloon and uh, usually usually we make clockwise rotation to visualize the portal confluence sometimes you direct see the liver if so just just down and counter clockwise and try to trace portal vein from hilar side to papillary side Landmarker, a uh, portal confluence, mean pancreatic duct, parenchyma of the pancreatic head. We common bile duct, cystic duct, and gallbladder. Finally, we examine from the duodenal second part or descending duodenum. We usually examine the papilla and pancreatic head and the inferior pancreas from the second part of the duodenum. Now, just it is very similar to uh, ERCB, straight the scope by right angulation and uh, down and withdraw the scope. Just to withdraw the scope. Till you can see the aorta and the IVC. Now, scope is here and we are withdrawing the scope. Please try to synchronize this picture with the, with the AOS picture. Now here and the, withdraw the scope. We can see the inferior pancreas first. This is the third portion. And the inferior pancreas we can see, and the more withdraw the scope, we can see the pancreatic head around here. Now, it is clear that you can, this is the low echoic area. Sorry. This low echoic area is the sign of papilla and it, it is the dorsal aspect of the pancreatic head. So this is the now clockwise rotation to see the ventral aspect, which is the white pancreas and the counterclockwise rotation to see the dorsal aspect of the pancreas and papilla here. This is the MBD and this CBD we should make just down angulation to not to compress the bile duct. Very important point. We have this bile duct and this MDD. And we should examine the pancreatic head here. Clockwise rotation to check the abdominal side and the counter clockwise rotation to check the dorsal side.
SMV and SMA. Now we examine the kinetic head completely. So just it is to uh, examine from the descending duodenum, visualize the endoscopic view of the duodenum and the pass the superior duodenal angle straight in the scope in the same way like ARCP, slowly withdraw echo in the scope with clockwise rotation. And here you should use the balloon to keep the scope in place, very important point. And also avoid to use counterclockwise rotation not to slip out from the stomach. Landmark is the spine, IVC, abdominal aorta, hair part of the tabula, CBD, MBD. So finally, I would like just to illustrate some important points during examination. First one, please make sure when you examine that scope shaft is straight for better visualization and the movement transmission. So this video is wrong like this one. If, if the scope, if the scope is Bended, try to, and while I'm using the clockwise counterclockwise, there is there is no movement here, no transmission of movement, and it's the very common mistake for beginners. Here is correct, scope shaft is straight, and you can transmit movement clearly here. So, please keep in mind this point. So usually double check the target lesions from different stations as much as possible. So if you have uh, pancreatic neck cancer, we should examine from stomach and from D1 like this. So examine carefully the missing point of the pancreas. Missing points are the pancreatic neck, inferior pancreas, pancreatic tail. Missing points means when there is lesion mass or something, there is no pancreatic duct dilatation. So it is difficult to detect by other modalities. So make sure you double check pancreatic neck and inferior pancreas and pancreatic tail. If you get lost during the US examination, don't apply vigorous movement and try to find landmark and start again from landmark. Finally, you should make your movement very slowly. Dr. Okono, which is the uh, next speaker, usually taught me Slowly, slowly. It is very similar to the abdominal echo. We, if you want to scan clearly, very fine movement and uh, the same in AOS. So sorry for being late a little bit and uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Maaz, thank for you. this uh, very nice uh, introduction about the AOS examination. Uh, now, if we, if, uh, if I inv invite uh, the course, uh, Professor Said Wanim from Al Mansura Faculty of Medicine to present uh, the next speaker, Nozomi uh, Okino, Professor Nozomi Okino. Please, Dr. Said Wanim. Make a mute. Make your phone a mute, please. Hi, hi, Dr. Okono. Hi, my name is Nozomi. Can you see my, can you see yes, my we, slide? We, we can see Dr. Okono, please. It's, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, my dear friend and uh, great Professor Okono, uh, yes. who talk about EOS guided tissue acquisition tips and tricks. Please, uh, Dr. Okono. Dr. Okono, please. Thank you for giving me such a wonderful opportunity. My name is Nozomi Okuno, the same name as the Japanese Shinkansen. Do you know Japanese Shinkansen? So please yes, call sir. me my name, Nozomi. And today's my topic uh, is uh, US Guided Tissue Acquisition. Is USFNA is now widely spread. Recently, we moved from USFNA to USFNB. 
After the repair of my end of FNB needles, US guided tissue acquisition is a not so difficult procedure. Uh, because US FNB needle provides a good specimen for pathological diagnosis. A result, uh, indication of US tissue acquisition. Ah, sorry, sorry. Before US tissue acquisition, uh, at first, we think imaging diagnosis and consider the purpose of USTA. We have to think and decide so many things before USTA as follows. Indications of USTA, just a diagnosis, need a much tissue. How do you approach so many things we can have to, uh, we have to think. And the indication of US tissue acquisition, a uh, result of USTA decide a treatment of plan. At first, get a pathologic diagnosis of a tumor. Second, diagnose the staging of a tumor, staging of cancer. And now, in Japan, comprehensive genomic profiling is very rapidly spread. So we need a big tissue for genomic profiling and we try by USTA. A puncture area is very wide. From oral, uh, we can approach not only abdominal region, but also mediastinal region, safety. In addition, pelvic region, uh, below the common iliac artery, also can approach trans and nerve. FNB needle is sharp, so puncture is easier than FNB needle. However, we can get a good core tissue by FNB needles. If you need the only pathological diagnosis, FNB needle is usually enough. On the other hand, you need a big core, FNB needle is recommended. Uh, recently, uh, various types of needles are available. Which needle is better? Expect, Easy Shot 3, Acquire, Shakoa. My favorite needle is Easy Shot 3 from Olympus and the Acquire needle from Boston Company as now. 22 gauge Easy Shot 3 is very sharp and easy to puncture. So for that diagnosis, I select this one. And 19 gauge acquire is also sharp, tough, and we can get big core. So we want big for genome profiling. I select this one. What is the difference between 19 gauge acquire and 22 gauge acquire? The cross section area of 19 gauge is a approximately three times compared to 22 gauge. So size of the core is quite different. Uh, which types of needles are better for pathological diagnosis? This paper reports the diagnostic accuracy and the sample frequency of needle sizes and the design. According to this meta-analysis, there are not significant difference in needle size and design. In the point of diagnosis, all needles are not a big difference. So your purpose is just a diagnose. Any needles are okay. Small needle or cheaper needle is probably enough. However, if target is SMT, Using FNB needle is higher sensitivity and higher accuracy. Adverse events are similar rates in both needles, FNA and FNB. And this paper reports the usefulness of forward viewing EUS with a CAP device for puncture SMT. CAP device can fix the target easily and make puncture easier. So I recommend it, the combination of forward viewing EUS with CAP device and FNB needles for SMT. Uh, case one, SMT, the echo visualizes the 15 
millimeter SMT on the posterior wall of the lower part of the body. We use the forward viewing scope with a cap like this. A suction and fix in, in the cap and puncture easily. We use to 22 gauge FNB needle for this case. And this is pathological diagnosis. We can get good tissue and cell block detected spindle shaped cell and immunostaining resulted uh, is GIST. Finally, we can get diagnosed GIST. Uh, is rose necessary? This meta analysis showed that rose improves the accuracy. However, this meta analysis showed rose group and non rose group showed comparable sensitivity and specificity. This paper is from Japan. We know the usefulness of macroscopic evaluation. We call MODE. 19 gauge FNA needle was used in this model study. We can see the white core more than four millimeter. Totally, we can finish the procedure because of enough specimen for diagnosis. This one is FNB needle. FNB needles are available both rows and modes are probably not necessary. For example, this picture shows big core and enough tissue provided by 19-gauge acquire needle. We don't need the loads and the modes because of big core specimen we can see easily. This is the image of needles. So the purpose is, is just diagnosis. Smaller needle is enough. Small needle is maybe safe, less bleeding, and easy handling. On the other hand, you need big sample. Bigger FNB needles are recommended. So you should select the needle types for your purpose. Uh, for diagnosis of the operable pancreatic cancer, I recommend 25 gauge FNB needle or 22 gauge FNA needle. Both needles are similar performance. If small target, 25 gauge FNA needle is useful. Big needle is not needed in this situation. Makes a smell and stain like this. Especially we take those with psychology. I present the one small pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma case. CT showed the direction of the MPD at the pancreatic tail, but mass itself is unclear. EUS could detect small, low echoic mass. What would you do next? We try EUS FNA. We can see 5 millimeter low echoic region. And in this case, we selected the 25 gauge FNA needle. And we could puncture. And this is a USFNA sample. And uh, we can diagnose malignant. And uh, patient received operation. The surgical specimen tumor size was only three millimeter. Performing loads, we can feedback instantly and we will make a good of loads result for next step. Previous case, after confirmed by loads, unnecessary puncture could be avoided. 
So in our hospital, basically perform roles. This paper showed that adequacy of genomic profiling, DNA and histology yield were considerably, uh, considerably superior using an FNB needle compared with an FNA needle. In operable, in operable cases, bigger FNB needle is recommended, recommended recently. Uh, Genomic profiling is available now in Japan. So uh, if we want to uh, perform genomic profiling, we use 19 gauge FNB needle. According to NCCN guidelines, for metastatic pancreas cancer patients, germline testing, gene profiling are recommended at first step of drug treatment because molecular therapies sometimes provide wonderful effect for cancers. In my center, comprehensive genome profiles are co common in now. Both tissue-based profiling and liquid-based profiling are available. Our gold standard of genomic profiling is Foundation 1, using tissue sample. However, if using the tissue sample, sensitivity of genomic profiling is higher than liquid-based analysis. We already know the number of mutation genes in pancreatic cancer is less compared to other cancers. Circulating tumor cell is sometimes not so large amount even if stage 4 patients. So until now, tissue genomic profiling is better for pancreatic cancer patients. So we want to get the big core tissue. In the point of CVP, a 22 gauge acquire or 19 gauge acquire, which is better? Left picture is a sample from 22 gauge acquire. We can diagnose enough, but cannot perform a genomic profiling. And 19 gauge acquire get uh, can get the big core tissue, and finally, this patient uh, can analyze foundation one. How to get best sample for gene analysis? It is also our standard procedure to get sample cancer patient. Our standard is because Genomic profiling is very important for all applications. So we try to use the video and we like this. Going to the formal directory to pick the system, hopefully, two parties are our standard procedure. Don't use negative pressure. In the video, this data is our CCP result of a pancreatic cancer patient. Sample adequacy of US tissue acquisition is less than 60%. However, now if using 19 gauge FNBFB without suction, Adequacy rate was up to uh, over 80% and not a significant difference from surgical specimen. However, a needle tract feeding is one of our problems of USFNA and FNB. Big needle is probably a little bit higher risk of complication, including needle tract feeding than small needles. Japanese multi center study showed the low risk of complication of US guided tissue sampling. Risk of needle tract seeding is less than 0.1% in this study. And this is our, my final case. This patient had a history of colorectal cancer and lung cancer, and the CT showed mediastinal lymphanode swelling. 
we had to diagnose the primary of the lymphoma to decide the treatment. And at first, we try U.S. tissue acquisition like this. But the old result of rose were necrosis. What do you do next step? Puncture the same area repeatedly? Change the puncture site? Change the needle? Finish? Assess? We try the somatoid enhance to confirm the viable area like this. Uh, this is first, first puncture, sorry. But all the tissue is necrotic. So we try the stomatoid enhance. The is not We cannot get Next, it's high from different. Diagnose uh, primary cancer, so we could design the document. I did my A small needle is enough for just a pathological diagnosis. A type of FNMB needle is enough for genomic screening. If those is available, it will be helpful for US acquisition. However, with 98 FNB needle, flows may not be necessary. Big FNB needle has a possibility of a high complication rate. This is for kind of system. Let's perform US tissue acquisition accurately and safely. When COVID-19 is over, I want to go to Egypt again. So please join us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Okuno. Thank you, Dr. Okuno, for this yes. uh, nice presentation. And we miss you so much. Yes, I miss you. And, and, the, next, uh, and the next photo. Very, very good picture. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Amgad uh, will invite. Uh, uh, one of the chairperson to another presentation, and we thank you. But I want to ask you uh, one question about uh, the cab. The cab, uh, uh, you use uh, front view AOS to take a biopsy with a cab, yes? Uh, uh, we, uh, yes? How, how, how can you, how can you adjustment without lever? the site of the biopsy. Are you hearing me? Yes. One more again. Sorry. Dr. Okay. How, Dr. How Dr. Jamal you... asked about the when using a forward view echo on the scope with the cap over the scope cap, how can yes. you adjust without lever in, in oblique view AOS? Yes. Yeah, the uh, oblique view is has lever, and we can adjust the if in a uh, needle by lever. Yeah, okay. uh, so elevator, 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 sorry, elevator. 
Okay, okay. And now I understand. Sorry. Ah, uh, what do you scope with no labor, no yes. elevation? Yes. So sometimes, ah, ah, to difficult to uh, adjust. Yeah. Needle. How can you adjust? Yes. yes. Up angle, up and down. Yes. It's uh, important for forward yes. view. And, up uh, and down. Uh, yes. The forward so viewing the scope. How to? How much time? Up angle, down, oblique. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. Now we end uh, the first session, and uh, okay. Um, now I invite the, second, the chairperson of the second session, and this session will be headed by uh, Professor Hussein Akasha. Professor Hussein Akasha is the chief and the founder of U.S. training courses in Egypt. We thank him very much for uh, this uh, activity. Regarding the this and the possible so please, Professor Hussein Akasha, to lead this session and invite the professor. Yes, hello everybody. Hello. Yes, hello everybody. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you yes. clearly, Doctor Hussein. Yes, uh, I'd like uh, I'd like to welcome you all, and uh, I'm very happy. Uh, to join you in this uh, prestigious meeting. Uh, and I welcome uh, my dear brother, uh, Dr. Muaz, and I welcome all uh, the Egyptians and Japanese uh, doctors. It's a pleasure and honor uh, to share with him uh, these elegant uh, uh, meetings and elegant talks. And thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hussein. So, Dr. Hussein, please introduce the next speaker, Dr. Shin Shinhaba. Uh, I have the pleasure and honor uh, to introduce uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Shin Haba. Dr. Shin Haba. Yes, Haba. yes, yes. Shin Haba. Uh, he will talk us uh, about uh, uh, IPMN and risk of uh, pancreatic ductal carcinoma and uh, an institutional experience. A very important topic, very important. I am, and I'm very interested uh, to hear from him this, uh, his experience in this. Uh, 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 very common uh, situations and meeting the in the uh, 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 nature of uh, IPMN. Thank you very much. Please, uh, please go. Thank you. Thank you, Chamber Chairperson. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. hear you clearly. You very well. Yes. Ah, hello, everyone. My name is Shing Haba. Uh, it is a great honor for me to make a presentation in at this wonderful conference, international conference. So I will share the screen. Yes, we can see very well. Okay. 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 Uh, the theme of presentation given for me is IPMN. And I would like to talk about not only IPMN, but about other pancreatic cystic lesions. There are a variety of cystic lesions arising in pancreas. Some of them are non-neoplastic, such as inflammatory fluid corrections, 
arising in after acute pancreatitis and retention cysts or something. And neoplastic cystic lesion include both benign or malignant lesions. Today, I am talking about these two topics. The first topic is differential diagnosis of pancreatic cysts. These pictures are all cystic lesions resected in our hospital, in our hospital. There are all cysts, but there are all cysts, but pathology is all different. To diagnose pancreatic cyst, imaging findings is are very important. We are considering about these points, morphologic features, structures inside the cyst, or connection to MPD or something to differentiate the lesions. ESFNA also give us an information to diagnosis. At first, the diagnosis of IPMNs. IPMNs are classified to these three types, main duct type, main duct type, branch duct type, and mixed type. Main duct type shows dilated MPD and no dilation of branch type branch duct. This type regarded, is regarded high risk for malignant lesions. On the other hand, branch duct type shows the dilatation of branch duct of pancreatic branch duct. Uh, and the shape is resembled for grape, grape shape. And mixed type is both MPD and branch duct is dilated. These two type, branch duct type and mixed type, has potential risk for malignancy. So we should diagnose malignant lesion and make make uh, and uh, we should diagnose malignant lesions. How to diagnose malignant lesions? This is a international consensus guidelines for the management of IPMN of the pancreas. This guideline shows high risk, three high risk stigmata and nine worrisome features. Uh, if we uh, if we see the, these findings we should consider operation. This is a case of, this is a case of a mixed type IPMN, 71 year old male. He has uh, dilated, dilated main pancreatic duct with, uh, with multilocular cystic lesions at the tail of the pancreas. The MPD is six millimeter dilated and cystic regions are, is 23 millimeter. The region contains no mural nodule. We di clinically diagnosed IPMN mixed type and the region has MPD dilation, the world found feature of MPD dilation, but no high risk stigmata. So we diagnosed this Legion is benign and we follow up this region. Another case, this is 78 year old female. The huge pancreatic mass is seen in CT and MRCP shows the region is almost dilated main pancreatic duct. And main duct contains a huge uh, papillary projection, papillary protrusion, and we diagnosed IPMN main duct type. So we considered 
T-star pancreatectomy. The region has, the cystic region has papillary projection and pathologically it contains uh, papillary region with uh, uh, invasion to pancreatic parenchyma. So invasive duct, uh, the pathological diagnosis is invasive duct adenocarcinoma derived from IPMN. This is another case. Uh, he has on in October 20, uh, 2018, he has uh, branch duct type IPMN at pancreatic head. This region has no malignant sign, worrisome features or high risk stigmata. But after two and a half years ago, the big pancreatic mass uh, appeared. And US shows irregular, irregular echo pattern and invasion is seen. 59 year old male, invasive mass at the head. And the, the site was B branch duct type IPMN has been existed. And mural nodule at main pancreatic duct. So we clinically diagnosed invasive carcinoma derived from branch duct type IPMN. So we conducted distal pancreatectomy. Ah, sorry, pancreatoduodenectomy. The resected specimens shows uh, pancreatic mass with uh, mucin producing. Uh, pathologically, it contains a big uh, mu mucus, mucus lake and papillary region in pancreatic duct. The mucus lake contains a tumor cell, carcinoma cells. So we diagnosed pathologically invasive mucinous, mucinous carcinoma derived from IPMN. Uh, IPMN sometimes arise uh, uh, invasive carcinoma. So we have to uh, check, uh, we have to follow up the uh, IPMN, IPMN. Let's move on to uh, another, other pancreatic cystic lesions. This is a uh, SCN patient, uh, 73 year old male. He has uh, 45 millimeter pancreatic body mass, and it looks like aggregation of small cysts like this. Uh, and uh, sonazoid enhancement shows early enhancement, and the region has no capsule. So we clinically diagnosed serous cystic neoplasm, serous cyst adenoma. So to check the diagnosis, we conducted ESFNA. The specimen, uh, the specimen show, uh, FNA, FNA specimen shows uh, fibrous tissue with uh, flat uh, linear epithelium. The pathologist suggests this region is serious, uh, is consistent with serious cyst adenoma. So we do follow up. The another case. The 34 year female, she has big pancreatic schist at body and tail. The region size was 19 millimeter. So, uh, the region has, so, uh, the region is surrounded by capsule wall and MRI, MRI shows septum and uh, schists inside the cyst, the so-called cysts in cyst. So we diagnosed uh, MCN. 
and distal pancreatectomy was conducted. The rejected specimen shows uh, big, big pancreatic, big pancreatic cyst, and pathologically, it contains the wall of the cyst contains very fibrous tissue and uh, the small amount of epithelium. And uh, sorry, pathologists suggest this is MCN. This is another case, 61 year male. He has 30 millimeter pancreatic tail cysts. The region is multilocular cyst, and US shows irregular wall thickness. Pancreatogram shows no connection to the cyst. So we, <laughs> We diagnosed this region uh, to solid neoplasm with cystic degeneration or non neoplastic cysts. So we conducted EUS FNA. FNA specimen shows no neoplastic cells and some lymphocytes or macrophage, macrophages. So pathological diagnosis is suggestive of lymphoepithelial cyst. This is a non-neoplastic cyst, so we do follow up. How about this case? This case shows, uh, this case is 65 year female. Uh, she has small pancreatic cyst at the body. The cyst contains some solid component with early enhancement. So we uh, diagnosed this region, solid neoplasm with cystic degeneration, mostly in that. And US, we performed USFNA. The result was neuroendocrine tumor, net. So we conducted a distal pancreatectomy. Uh, the rejected specimen shows Solid tumor and uh, solid tumor and uh, cystic degeneration, like this. And the tumor cells shows uh, tumor cells diagnosed as neuroendocrine tumor. This is a, a the other case. Fifteen year old male, a female and pancreatic body cyst, 30 millimeter pancreatic body cyst. The region also contains cystic component with enhancing, enhancement, and it has capsule wall. This is very uh, resemble to the previous case. So we diagnose solid, solid neoplasm with cystic degeneration and USFNA conducted. So USFNA specimen shows as SPN, solid should papillary neoplasm. So we performed pancreatoduodenic, ah, sorry, distal pancreatectomy. The rejected specimens, the result of pathological findings is solid should papillary neoplasm. Uh, <sighs> The differential diagnosis of pancreatic cysts is uh, sometimes very difficult. This is one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the idea to a differential diagnosis. If you see pancreatic cysts, uh, please check solid component inside or beside the cyst. If there is a solid component. Uh, you should uh, consider IPMNs with mural nodule or MCNs with mural nodule or cystic degeneration of solid tumors, like uh, such as NET, SPN, or some other carcinomas. If there is no solid component, uh, please check MPD or branch di dilation. If 
it has uh, MPDO branch dilation. Uh, check the structure, uh, MPD structure of head site. If yes, please consider retention cyst. And if there is no structure, uh, IPMN or pseudocyst is considered. And if, if the patient has past history of pancreatitis, uh, inflammatory fluid correction is considered. And if none, uh, some other MCN or SCN or some other cyst is uh, considered. Uh, the differential diagnosis is sometimes very difficult, but uh, it's very important to uh, make decision for therapeutic strategy. Let's move on to the next topic. Uh, this is a, uh, another case of IPMN. 59 year male, uh, he has head, uh, IPMN, branch duct IPMN uh, at head of the pancreas and followed up for four years. Uh, then the pancreatic mass at the body uh, appears. So pathologically diagnosed as pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. Uh, we, uh, during uh, April 2013 to uh, September 2020, 637 IPM patient was followed up. Uh, among them, 28 patients were rejected. And there is there are eight P pancreatic ductal adenocarcinomas and seven uh, IPMC patients. Among 609 non rejected patients, uh, seven of them were unresectable pancreatic ductal adenocarcinomas. The, this is a slide for incidence of PDAX during follow-up of IPMN. Uh, among six, 630 patients, uh, 1.9% at on five-year, uh, sorry, uh, of, if you follow up five years, 1.9% uh, patient, percent patient uh, uh, our PDAC, PDAC patients are arrived. Uh, we conducted a multivariate analysis to Uh, uh, this is a, a slide for multivariate analysis, but uh, we analyzed some risk factors for arising PDAC during IPMN follow-up, but no uh, risk factors were elucidated. This is a summary. The number of PDAC patients arising during follow-up of IPMN were 14. Six of them were unresectable. The five-year cumulative incidence of PDAC during follow-up of IPMN was 1.9%. Significant fact risk factors predicting, uh, sorry, significant risk factors predicting occurrence of PDAC during follow-up of IPMN were not elucidated. But uh, the arising of PDAC is uh, very important for following up IPMN, so we have to check. This is a final slide. Uh, there are a variety of cystic lesions arising in pancreas. Differential diagnosis of pancreatic cystic lesion is sometimes difficult. Hi. Slide is not moving. How is it? Are you notation? We can see the slide well. We can see the slide, Dr. Hara. Really? Yes, yes. We all can see this. Maybe 
Okay. Okay. The, wish you. The slide okay. is take home message. Okay. We can see. We can, we can see the slide well. Really? Yes. Yeah. Now take home message. Yes. The finally. <laughs> okay. This is the fi final sentence. Final sentence. Okay. Following up of IPMN is necessary to diagnose not only for development to I IPMC, but also for occurrence of PDAC, mm -hmm. concomitant with IPMN. Uh, thank you very much for my presentation. So for uh, listening for listening my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Haba. Thank you. Then, uh, uh, I, I want Dr. Hussein, uh, uh, Can I have a question or we should postpone questions to the end of the session? You yes. can uh, ask a question at any time, Dr. Hussein. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, nice lecture. And I have a straightforward question. Uh, do you recommend, do you recommend yes. FNE? In any case, in any cyst with worrisome feature, of course, if mm. there is high risk stigmata, you send the patient for surgery. But if there is a, a, a cyst with any item of the worrisome features, for example, cyst larger than three centimeters, do you recommend FNE in any cyst with any uh, worrisome feature? And what is the most important uh, chemical markers uh, recommended for analysis in the cystic fluid. Yes, uh, thank you for your uh, excellent question. Uh, it is very difficult to uh, reply, but uh, if the um, uh, IPMN region and uh, it has sick, uh, high risk stigmata or uh, or some feature, we uh, sell them to do EUSFNA. Not always, very rare. Because uh, we uh, decide to, or we consider to um, resection by the, on, uh, only by imaging findings. Not, um, so, IPM, uh, EUSFNA for IPMN uh, is. Uh, sorry, uh, no, not necessary for our uh, host, our hospital. And uh, but but you then you then uh, if yes. you, for example if you find. Uh, assist about four centimeter, no yes. neural nodules, uh, yes. no obstructive jaundice, yes. uh, no uh, dilatation of the pancreatic duct. It yes. appears as a, it is a simple cyst, but it is yes. larger than three centimeter. Then yes. there is a worrisome feature. Yes. Uh, to my eyes, it appears as a simple cyst. Yes. Uh, no need for major surgery like uh, a pancreatic urinectomy or this pancreatectomy for this cyst. Yes. But yes. I fear, but I fear yes. that if I uh, follow the follow up uh, protocol, mm. I can find aggressive tumor after uh, a few years. Then what yes. is what, what is what is the uh, solution here? Uh, what is your recommend? Because uh, these cysts are not uh, are, are, are very common to see. Uh, cyst that it is simple in your eyes, but mm. it is larger than three centimeters. Yes. What do you on see? The, uh, the findings on, uh, only if the mm, worrisome feature with uh, over th three centimeter, uh, maybe it is not enough to uh, make decision for pancreatectomy because uh, yes. over three centimeter, but benign region is, uh, there is many, many cases, you know? Then you so, do FNA by then or just follow up? Mm, not, not for all cases. 
not for all cases. Mm. Uh, because uh, uh, we are uh, the mirror nodule or uh, some other findings are more important, more important. Yes, because in in my experience over 15 years, I yes. met six cases of mm. uh, cyst about three and a half centimeter or four centimeter. And the cyst appears very simple. The fluid mm. is clear, no mural nodules. Mm. And my policy is to do FNA for safety. And mm. FNA revealed the mucinous fluid. Sometimes mucinous fluid appears jet black and very clear no internal echoes, no neural modules, and surprise mm. that the aspirate is a honey-like, this whitish honey-like aspirate, and it is uh, positive for mucine, despite no suspicious cells, but the, mm. the mucine stain is positive. And mm. then this, I send those patients, what, what, whenever I find mucine, I send the patient for surgery. And the six patients prove that it is a mucinous new place. So, mm. uh, but uh, in the opposite side, you can find tens and hundreds of cysts. And after mm. aspiration, it is a very clear fluid, no mucine. And then I did FNA for, uh, so it is sometimes very difficult to differentiate mm. mucinous cysts from simple cysts based yes. on only one item of worrisome features. I am not talking about high risk stigma. I am talking about worrisome feature. Yes. Is, is, is there a solution for this problem in order not mm. to overuse FNE? Or what is your policy in, this, in these cases? Uh, it, I think uh, ESFNA is one of the, the idea to differentiate, but uh, in our hospital, we seldom do. We, we, what? I, I didn't hear we, you, please repeat. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do, we seldom to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very rare. Yeah, yeah. mm. Yes, seldom, yes. The, yes. yes. Yeah. So the, we are, uh, we think very more important, uh, more importance for uh, other uh, imaging findings or something. Okay. Then mm. thank you very much and thanks again for the thank very you. nice lecture in this very in this in the dilemma of pancreatic cyst. <laughs> I am I am I am always calling it a dilemma of pancreatic cyst. And thank yes. you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Gamal, do you want to add the next one or what? Or will I add them? Dr. Dr. Gamal, mute. Father Dr. Hussein. اه دكتور حسين دكتور حسين معاك اه دكتور جمال تحب تقدم اللي بعديه ولا اقدمه انا؟ لا تفضل تفضل يا دكتور حسين تفضل بس اي ونت اي هاف ذا بليجر اند اونر تو انتروديوس بروفيسور تاكاميشي كوهارا هي ويل توك اس اباوت ا فيري نيو اسبيكت ويتش اي دونت نو اي ثينك اباوت ات ا فيري نيو بات اي ثينك ات مي بي ا بروميسينج ا بروميسينج تكنيك ان ذا اندوسكوبيك الترا ساوند which is artificial uh, intelligence in endoscopic ultrasound. Please, please go on. Thank you. Are, can you hear me? Yes, yes. We, we hear you clear. Yes. yes, OK. Yes, OK. Oh, I, I am Takanchi Kuwahara from I Cancer Center Hospital. I'd like to speak about the AI analysis for pancreatic diseases. Agenda, I want to talk in this presentation about the mechanism and the development of AI and the development of AI for the diagnosis of pancreatic cyst. In, in this slide, I simply explain the AI mechanism. After several information, such as images, text data, audio information and gene genetic data were input to AI and process AI processed these input information mathematically and output the results such as classification and regression. For developing an AI, training process is needed. For training AI, GPU or GPU cloud is needed. 
we develop AI architecture training process and validation process are developed by using programming code. The first process of AI is image correction and the annotation. We have to correct so many regions images and annotate the region by several methods. After that, we need to select AI architecture. There are three types of AI architecture, image classification, object detection, and semantic segmentation. Image classification architecture is AI classifier images into several categories. This slide shows a classification and this image and classified as cat. Object detection architecture is that AI detects the region and the classified detected region into several categories. However, the diagnosis ability of classification architecture in object detection is lower than that of classification architecture. This video shows object detection architecture. AI detects several regions, such as person, a car, chair, and desk. AI can detect so many regions at once quickly. Using this, this architecture, I developed the original model. This movie shows the original model of the object detection. This model detects the cell, cell phone, a PC monitor, and so on. Using IPN images, I developed the SIS detection architecture. This movie shows the real-time object detection of IPN software. This region is IPN B9, and AI can detect uh, as IPN B9. This movie is one of the latest architecture, semantic segmentation. In object detection, uh, AI only detect regions as square. This semantic segmentation model detects the region of pixel level. This movie shows the semantic segmentation demo. AI can detect cars, fly, person, and so on. This model is the latest version of the semantic segmentation, uh, the DETR, uh, made by the Facebook. Using this model, I developed the original model. This AI can detect chair, monitor, and person. This person is a uh, Dr. Koda, a previous resident. Now he works at uh, Totori University. In image classification architecture, input images are converted to probability of each level. Yeah, finally, I output the uh, probability. This image shows the example of image classification model. Each image is input into AI model. Each provides the output, a dog or cat. Using this model, I developed the original AI that can crush with IPM or pancreas tumor into malignant or not. Using this model, I developed the real-time classified software. This software can select the region manually or automatically and classify select region into malignant or not. This movie shows the real-time classified or malignancy in IPM. Our first IPN region is selected and classified into migrant or not. After that, AI can track IPN region and continent classified. AI shows the probability and classified level on the left upper of US images. Second demo video is a benign IPML. Our first IPN region is selected manually and classified into migrant or not. 
Yes, so the probability and crash were available on the left upper of the US images. And the mean result of the uh, total image of the showed on the left bottom of the US images. Well, third video images were migrant IPA men. AI can also crash by this region as migrant and track IPN region. This AI can be there as a, this is the AI crash by into migrant. This AI can be there as a color map that AI thinks important region or not for classification. This AI point out the IPN and nodule for important position for classification. Chroma visualization can show the basis that AI classified. This table shows the comparison of diagnosis variability between AI and EUS features. Sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy of AI were about 90% and the or higher than human diagnosis guidelines and conventional US images features. This is a demo video with real time evaluation software, a trunk tumor. This case is PDAC. This I can classify this region as a carcinoma. Second demo video is net. Roy set on the region air oh. sorry. Air produce this region as non-carcinoma. So the demo video is SPL. Air also produce this region as non-carcinoma. Plus them with its ARP and misdiagnosis cases. This AI product, this region as carcinoma, but and I perform the US and and diagnose as ARP. This video shows the latest version of the, my AI system. This AI can direct uh, this uh, region is a PDAC. This AI can direct the region automatically, not ma manually, and crash very migrant or not. This video shows the result of a ROC analysis for each patient with test data. The sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy were 93%. 93%, and 90%. For AI developing tra uh, training, numerous measures are needed. We need, we need at least thousands of images per, per, per one class. For latest version of AI architecture, three billion images are needed for pre training. However, for developing AI medical diagnosis, it is difficult to collect enough images to train AI. I will introduce a new AI method to overcome this problem. DC GAN is one of the unsupervised learning model, which has two CNN networks and can generate some fake images similar to real images. Random noise is input in the AI, and it, AI can generate fake images very similar to real images. This video shows the broccoli and the very similar Mahabaga. These images don't exist in real world. Yeah, and can generate several types of images. These pictures are generate fake images by Jack. These images are not real images or 
or in the early, not the early, the early ages. Yeah, Jan can generate the infinite images by changing the input random noises. This movie shows that Jan generates the numerous face images by changing the input the noises. All faces are not existed in their world. All, all fake images. Oh. I developed the AI model with the candidate punk test terminals. This video shows the process of GAN training. At first, GAN only generates the sandstorm language images. GAN can begin to generate the images similar to real US images gradually. Now, at the center of the black regions and began to tumor. This drawing process needs about three days. At last, uh, this uh, image, fake images, similar to ESN's images of the net. At last, summary. There are several types of AI architectures. AI may apply to several medical diagnoses. I'm done with my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you for a very nice presentation. Thank you for the very nice presentation. I want yeah. to ask you uh, two questions. Yeah. Uh, the, the first one, uh, can you clarify what is GPU? What? GPU. You, you, in the first of your uh, uh, talk, you, uh, uh, you uh, tell us we need a GPU. GBU. GBU? Yes, what is GBU? G ah, is GBU. Ah, graphic, yes. graphic process unit, which is one of the uh, computer resources. Uh, is this a software or a machine? No, no, computer hardware. Hardware. Hard hardware. And yeah. uh, connected with uh, the endoscopic machine. Yeah, computer. Compute, uh, connected with the computer. And, yes. Uh, yeah, and CPU and GPU and uh, SSD and connected to the uh, endoscopic apparatus. Yeah, it's available in Japan to take this uh, GPU? Mm, yes, yeah. in Japan, we can get the GPU, but very high high cost. Yes. So wow, uh, the, the one, one million dollars. <laughs> one million. Uh, I want to ask you a second question. Uh, you, yeah. you, you tell us the sensitivity and specificity for uh, AI is very, very uh, high, uh, yeah. near to, uh, 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 about uh, this uh, uh, talk, يعني, is, is this technique can replace a biopsy? We can depend mm -hmm. on this technique? Yeah, in the future, I don't need the uh, biopsy. Uh, no, AI can uh, <laughs> diagnose this. Me, me, me. So, me. Yeah, it's still developing. Maybe in the future. In the future, in the future, mm. I think uh, it is no need to take a biopsy. Uh, how many patients you 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 make this study? How many patient you make this study uh, about sensitivity and specificity? Depending on the uh, no, diseases, I think it's no need to uh, no, much much patient. Uh, maybe from uh, no, thousand uh, one uh, three hundred. About, but yes. pancreas tumor is a very difficult to uh, diagnose. Uh, maybe one thousand is needed. Mm. Uh, can we use uh, artificial intelligence in another region? I uh, uh, from two years I uh, was in Spain and uh, uh, one Spanish uh, uh, doctor speak about artificial intelligence in diagnosis of uh, uh, polyp, gastric polyp, uh, uh, gastric cancer, something like this. Is this the same idea? Yes, yes, yes. Same, same technique uh, uses uh, on the cancer. Oh. Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. OK. OK. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh,
uh, now uh, we, we one of the uh, uh, chairperson in the second session can introduce the next presentation, please. Dr. Sami. Dr. Sami, please unmute the speaker. Okay, Dr. Wise, uh, if Dr. Sami uh, didn't uh, introduce, you can introduce the second speaker, please. Okay. So uh, now we are waiting for the uh, hot session and uh, scientific discussion and cooperation with uh, our boss, Dr. Kazu Hara. Dr. Hara, one of the uh, eminent figure in the field of uh, endoscopic ultrasounds, he actually found some techniques from the start here in Japan. And in 2003, I remember, as I remember, he started to uh, run AOS guided biliary drainage. Uh, today, he will uh, focus more about the uh, how frequent or how safe we can use plastic stent in AOS guided biliary drainage. This topic may be very important for uh, us in Egypt because of uh, sometimes we have uh, economical limitation to use metallic stents. So please, Dr. Hara, please. Yes. Hi, I'm Kazuhara. Hello, Dr. Gamma. Hello, Dr. Hello, Hara. Dr. I, I miss you so, so much. <laughs> I also. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Kasha. Long time no see. Hello, how are you? Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> OK. Can I share my slide? And I already made the video. Thank you for all participants for inviting okay. me in this wonderful meeting. <laughs> it's my great honor to give my lecture. At first, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Kazuhara. This picture is my hospital named Anchi Cancer Center. Nagoya City is my hometown. Nagoya Castle is shown in this picture. It's a beautiful place. However, it's a very hot place in the summer. This room is our interventional endoscopy room. We performed 103 cases USBD last year. This is our endoscopic room. Many foreign students visit our center to run US intervention. In this picture, Dr. Moraz performed USBD. He came from Egypt. Now he is running interventional US procedure and he can get Japanese PhD in our research center. Today, my topic is how to perform USBD safety. This is a very important point for USBD. Until now, common indication of USBD is rescue for failed ERCP cases. All endosonographers probably agree this indication. Latest indication is estimated difficult ERCP cases. It's not failed ERCP cases. For example, surgical or third anatomy cases. In such cases, balloon ERCP or PTBD is usually selected for malignant biliary obstruction. However, balloon ERCP is sometimes very difficult and we need much time Reintervention is also difficult. USBD is much easier than balloon LCP. Reintervention is also easier. We already reported the first line EUS HGF for altered anatomy patient. Reintervention is very easy. Procedure time is so short. We recommend the EUS HGS in such cases for easy reintervention. However, my indication of ESBD is primary ESBD for 
normal anatomy patient. This is our paper. This paper is the first report of primary EUSBD in 2007. We performed EUCDS for normal anatomy patients using forward view in the US. High success rate and no severe complications were reported. The most important point of primary USBD is zero pancreatitis. Zero pancreatitis. ENCP cannot avoid pancreatitis, but ESBD can avoid pancreatitis. This is wonderful result for patient. Already RCTs of ELCP versus ESBD was published. High technical success high clinical success and low complication rate were reported. These results are acceptable. How about as a benefit of primary EUSBD? For example, advanced pancreatic cancer invade into saline tissue aggressively. The adrenal obstruction and biliary obstruction is very common symptom as usual. Patients need duodenal stent and biliary stent to resolve the symptom. However, double stenting is not so easy procedure. In clinical course, stent dysfunction is a common rate complication. We need re-intervention for stent dysfunction. However, re-interventional ERCP is usually very difficult and not successful due to the duodenal stent. Finally, patients need ESBD or PDBD. So, ESBD is recommended in such cases at first time. At first time is the most important. How to perform ESCDS? I recommended the forward viewing US and Fuji oblique viewing US. USBD. For the viewing US is not common scope, so I show you my procedure using Fujiscope. Endoscopic view of Fujiscope is available even in US scope. So we can put stand easily and safely. At first, dilated CBD is visualized under US. CBD is punctured using 19 gauge needle, inject contrast medium, guide wire insertion deeply. We use 6 French cautery dilator, and finally, we put fully covered razor cut metal stent. Open half in the bar depth, and finally, fully open in the theodera. Fujiscope is good endoscopic view, so we can perform successfully and safely like this. I recommended the laser cut fully cover metal stent because the mesh of laser cut metal stent is sharp. The gripping force is so strong, stent dislocation just after stent placement is unlikely to happen. After fistula creation, we can perform reintervention easily. So, I recommend laser cut free cover metal stent for ESCDS strongly. How about lumen opposing metal stent? Axios make the procedure easier because of one step devices. This is very good devices. If you use actions, procedure is much easier, but stent dysfunction is not so rare because actions is very short stent and big ball, so stent kinking and food impaction is very common. We report it. Food residue was 11% and kinking was 5%. The overall adverse event rate was 
36.8%. So Axios is a little bit high complication rate, especially rate complication. And now we think a tubular metal stent is ideal for US CDS. How about US HGS? Probably many endosonographers consider the technical difficulty in US HGS. Puncture basically is common procedure in US HGS. Basically is sometimes located deeper portion in US images. So to access B3 is sometimes technically difficult. After puncture B3, guide wire negotiation is sometimes difficult. Guide wire kinking, peeling, broken are common complications. This is the most difficult step in EUSBD. If you can puncture B2 from stomach, bile duct is straight. So device insertion and the procedure is easier. B3 is much bending, so after puncture, B3 is sometimes difficult, as you see. This picture is my bad memories. After B2 puncture from esophagus, pneumothorax and pneumoderma were seen. We could understand the risk of B2 puncture from esophagus after this case. We already reported EUS HGS using forward viewing scope 22 gauge and 018 wire. This technique is easier than before. 22 gauge needle needs 018 inch wire, so we develop brand new 018 wire. This wire is very similar with normal 025 wire. Torque, hardness, pushability, toughness, are very similar with 025 wire. This wire name is Filda 18 from Olympus. This is our techniques. We usually use 22 gauge 018 wire. Now we puncture the B2 bile duct, and after B2 bile duct puncture, guide wire insertion deeply. This wire is 018 wire, very small but very good wire. This is 018 wire. After wire insertion, next step is dilation. This is a taper cannula. Taper cannula is enough. And if possible, we put anti grade stenting, but not necessary. And finally, we put HGS. This stent is fully carbon metal stent. Bore are 6, length is 12. 6 is enough. Big bore stent is not so good. And then finally, we open the stent in the stomach. This is a forward viewing scope, so we can easily confirm the stent. Like this. Currently, new dedicated devices were developed. Traditional plastic stent. Plastic stent is acceptable or not for USBD? My answer is acceptable, however, not recommended. According to our data, plastic stent is a risk factor for adverse event in US CDS, so we don't recommend plastic stent. This paper reported bile peritonitis after EUS CDS. We are usually able to manage bile peritonitis conservatively. But if severe, we need additional drainage. This is our case. The bile duct was not so big dilated, so we put 7 French plastic stent. After procedure, bile leakage was seen in this patient. Plastic stent is small bore, so bile leakage happened. This picture is focal cholangitis caused by big bore metal stent. This complication is common in big bore metal stent. This picture is secondary stenosis caused by a big bore metal stent. 
This is an also common complication in big barometer stent. So, big metal stent is not so good for US HGS, but plastic stent is also not so good. What is the ideal stent for US HGS? Easy insertion, no dislocation, no bile leakage, no focal grandiitis, no injured bile duct, Removable, easy intervention, long patency. This is an ideal stent. An ideal stent for US HGS is not yet now. Maybe a small bore metal stent is better for US HGS, in my opinion. Traditional plastic stent is acceptable, but not recommended by me. This is my final slide. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you for all Egyptian doctors. Thank you, Dr. Hara. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Hara, for, the, for this, uh, for this uh, presentation, nice presentation. And uh, uh, we, we take a much knowledge about this presentation. And I, I want to ask you uh, about Dr. Muaz. Uh, how many cases uh, Dr. Muaz uh, makes uh, uh, AOS belly drainage by himself? Maybe five or six cases. Nearly five or six cases. But he can now. Yes. By himself. Yes. But uh, he needs a good assistant. He can perform, but uh, good yes. assistant is needed. So. Yes, so, uh, and I want uh, to ask you. I want to ask yeah. you about it. Um, uh, uh, can how can we uh, uh, deal with uh, escaped or uh, migrating uh, metallic stent uh, in AUS billiard drainage? It is necessary to make an uh, a surgery, or we can solve this problem by AUS. Hmm. Your question is: metal stent is a Sorry, your question is a metal stent, is it? Hmm? I, I asked about the migration of metallic stent. Can mm -hmm. we deal with this by AOS or we must ma uh, make a surgery for this patient? No, 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 no. So if migrate stent and, uh, for example, altered anatomy cases, yes. you, at first, you puncture the metal stent in the river and yes. additional metal stent you put, okay? You okay. Uh, then the can, can I ask a question, please? Hmm? Uh, can you, can I ask a question? Okay, Dr. Hussain, uh, mm -hmm. And thank you very much for your uh, very nice lecture. Uh, I know that you have a great, great experience in US biliary drainage, and it is a pleasure and honor uh, to hear from you uh, this type of lectures. Yeah. Uh, as I understood, the preferred the preferred stent for a hepatico gastrostomy for you is the long is the long covered metal stent about at least 10 centimeter and i noticed that you leave a large part of the stent in the stomach uh, many 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 professors uh, just leave one and a half centimeter to two centimeter in the stomach. But I noticed that you leave a large part uh, of the metal stent in the stomach. And this is very logic for me because inward displacement inside the liver is a very serious situation, but outside displacement is much less serious situation. So finally, we want to have your great experience in hepatico gastrostomy. Am I right that you prefer 10 centimeter fully covered uh, self-expandable metal stent leaving at least four or five centimeter in the stomach? Am I right? Or you can correct me if you want. Yes, I agree, totally agree with you. Longer stent, more than 10 cm, is better. And in the stomach part, 4 or 5 cm is good. 
I'm totally agree with you because this location is very bad. This location in the stomach is not so big problem, but internal migration is a big problem. So longer part in the stomach is better. So I totally agree with you. Okay, a second question. In your experience, what is the incidence of migration of this type of stent inside the stomach? Mm -hmm. High incidence or you notice that it is it is the, the usual instance because in Egypt we don't use we didn't use this type of stents but we use uh, the half and half or two thirds and third uh, covered and uncovered stent about uh, uh, eight centimeter uh, long the geopore or that of Thai wound. Uh, then do you recommend using this stent or shift to your uh, privileged stent or your favorable stent. What 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 did you advise us? Yes. So in my opinion, maybe in Egypt and Japan, it may be different stent. So some stent available only in Japan. So I I recommend you for HGS longer stent and fully cover and the actual force a little bit hard stent is better. Because a very soft metal laser cut, no, no, very soft metal stain, sometimes bending in the abdominal. You know, so a little bit hard stain is better to prevent dislocation. Mm, okay. okay. And fully cover metal stain is very easy the intervention. Half bare, half cover stain, like the Germanine stain, is not so good because very difficult to intervention. I don't very difficult. Very good, very, very difficult, difficult re intervention. Re intervention, yes, 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 very difficult. So, mm. so I don't recommend like this stand. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, and hoping to meet you uh, after the corona era. It yes, will be course. very nice to see you after <laughs> the corona era. era. Yes. And uh, congratulations for the Olympic Games. Did oh, you support? You did yeah. you support the Olympic Games or one of the opponents? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Most of the the world opponent. Yeah. Opponent, yes, I am with you. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think we should. Uh, uh, get... about, can, uh... about some questions from audience, Dr. Hassan. Is there some question from audience or other chambers? Uh, there is no uh, uh, question and answers here now. I mean, it is uh, no one, no one asked the question. It is just a chat. Uh, uh, no sound, no sound. Thank you for the excellent. Uh, thank you all. Thank you for the excellent lectures. Thank you for the attendance. No, just a chat. Uh, no questions and answers. Uh, no questions. No questions in the in the questions and answer box. Yes, I would like to add something which is very unique in, in our center, in IG Cancer Center. During the era of, uh, of AOS HGS, we, we, we only use mechanical dilator. Mechanical dilator makes the procedure very safe. It is totally different from the European school and the other school. Usually, they use uh, electrocutary dilator. So maybe I saw so maybe more than three or four hundred of cases in this center, according to my experience. We never use electrocutary in the AOSH. So I think it is a very important message from the IH Cancer Center for the audience uh, in Egypt and the world. <coughs> Please try to use mechanical dilator. But it but makes... but you have but you have a special types of mechanical dilators. The rigid you are one. Correct. You are correct. But <laughs> our mechanical dilators, like Sohendra dilators, is very soft, so it will never yeah. work. So yes, if Sohendra you if you want to advise us to use this the mechanical <laughs> dilator, you should give a large number of dilators with you from okay. Japan. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. And, yes. And, and I will pay for that. I will pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Hara. I, I want to ask you about uh, uh, balloon ERCB. 
كان يو بالون اي ار سي بي كان يو ديسكاس وي وي دينت نو ذيس تايب اوف اي ار سي بي ات از وركينج لايك انتيروسكوب اور وات از ذا ميكانيزم اوف بالون اي ار سي بي يس ات فيرست بالون اي ار سي بي اي دونت لايك بيكوز بي بيرلي كومبليكيتد اند وي نيد ماتش تايم سو اي دونت لايك If possible, I perform ESBD, always ESBD, e even the pancreas. Yes. So, baron ELCP is very small cases in our center. So, yes. maybe you will expert. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I think um, we came to the end of this uh, very nice uh, symposium and uh, I'd like to thank the uh, Professor uh, uh, Hara and the, the Egyptian, the Japanese team for these uh, nice lectures and the Professor Maaz as well. We thank you very much. Uh, I would uh, like to extend my thanks to uh, all uh, uh, chairpersons and uh, who uh, attendees who attended that uh, nice lecture. And um, um, it is the second, I mean, um, yeah, scientific collaboration with the IG uh, Cancer Center, but it will not be the last, inshallah. We are, uh, I mean, hoping for future cooperation with IG Center and uh, hoping to see uh, all your team, Professor Hara, again in, uh, in Egypt, inshallah, uh, soon. Thank you very much for all. And we came to the end of the uh, uh, symposium. Thank you. Be, be, and see you before, bef, before the end, uh, Dr. Uh, Amgad, I want yes. to invite uh, all the speakers in this symposium in our uh, international uh, uh, congress in uh, next December. It will be a hybrid, and uh, I, I, I'm honored to invite uh, Dr. Hara and his team to make another uh, presentation, very nice presentation. Uh, we will uh, have a, a, a big branch about EOS uh, in this uh, conference, and I invite uh, Dr. Hara and his team to make a, a, a nice presentation in uh, next December, uh, inshallah. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for all, and see you soon, inshallah. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, see you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. وأحب أشكر وأحب تفضل تفضل جمال تفضل تفضل أحب أشكر شركة يوتيوبيا على البرزنتيشن على إنها دعمت النقل الجيد ده وإن شاء الله يبقى في تعاون بيننا مسلم إن شاء الله فأنا بشكر كل التيم بتاع يوتيوبيا وبصراحة يعني جود وورك وشكرا جزيلا لكم جميعا شكرا لكم جمال على الدعوة وسعيد إن قابلت الدكتور جمال والدكتور أمجد آه سعيد جدا آه والدكتور معاذ طبعا ان شاء الله آه ربنا يوفقه ويرجع بالسلامه ان شاء الله. دكتور حسين دكتور حسين احنا ما نقدرش نعمل حاجه عن الاي يو اس من غير ما حضرتك تكون موجود معانا فيها طبعا لان انت يعني ليدر وافضلك على الجميع في هذا المجال يعني ربنا يوفقك. لا ربنا يبارك فيك. هي هي سعاده وشرف ليا ان انا ابقى فوز اخواتي فعلا. ربنا يبارك فيك يا دكتور حسين. نورتنا الفهم دايما ان شاء الله. شكرا جزيلا شكرا, 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 شكرا عليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته